In advance of this week's convention, Republican Party leadership took efforts to quell a potential challenger, Congressmember Ron Paul. Although Paul only has about 175 delegates, his supporters are working to the very end, some even distributing an open letter to RNC delegates, urging them to switch their votes. Paul doesn't have a speaking slot at the official convention, but he did hold a counter-rally Sunday where thousands gathered at the University of South Florida for what might be the retiring Congress member's last bid for president. From Tampa, WMNF's Samuel Johnson reports. Ron Paul and his supporters have set themselves apart from the established ideology of the Republican Party. Paul, who has run for president twice before, said the ideas of his movement will be heard during the events of the RNC. People at the convention were worried uh, just how much uh, trouble we would cause, and uh, you generally have known what my advice is, just stopping something for the sake of stopping doesn't achieve a whole lot, so I've been a little bit cautious, but uh, what they have uh, found out is they've overstepped the bound. There's a big fight going on, and we're involved in it, but everybody else, a bunch of them are joining us and say, you've gone too far, the Ron Paul people were right about overstepping their bound. Paul's platform includes ending costly foreign wars in the Federal Reserve, a proposal that resonated with rally speaker and South Carolina State Senator Tom Davis. The most powerful man in the world is, it's not the President of the United States, it is the Chairman of the Federal Reserve, and he's hollowing us out. Many supporters are attracted to Paul's call to repeal drug laws, and at Sunday's rally, he also expressed support for WikiLeaks and Bradley Manning. But some on the left have criticized his attacks on abortion and reproductive rights. At Sunday's rally, Paul deferred speaking directly about abortion to economics professor and longtime libertarian Walter Block of Loyola University in a speech that wasn't well received by the crowd. The unwanted fetus is a trespasser, and it's very easy to see this in the case of rape. A woman is walking down the street, she gets grabbed, she gets impregnated, and now she's got something growing in her, and you don't call that a trespass? That's absolutely a trespass. If she owns her womb, if she owns her womb, She's got something growing in it there that she never agreed to. Second premise in this argument, the rights of all fetuses are equal. So if I can prove that one fetus is a trespasser, I can prove that they all are because they all have the same rights because the fetus that is a result of a rape is just as innocent of any crime as any other fetus. They're all innocent. Paul himself would like to repeal Roe v. Wade, and he signed a pledge to support so-called personhood, which defines life as beginning at conception. He also came under fire for his association with racist and anti-Semitic newsletters in the 80s and 90s. But Sunday night, Paul focused on personal freedoms. He cautioned the crowd to speak about increasing totalitarianism by invoking lessons from the past. So the, uh, the really big question I think that we have to decide upon is which way are we going to go? Uh, we see the end of an era. Where is it going to go? And I think the choice is one or two. I do not think that there's going to be another Marxist come along and restore enthusiasm for Marxism. Some have described this week's appearance and speech in Tampa as Ron Paul's swan song because of his retirement from Congress later this year. Samuel Johnson, FSRN, Tampa.